So we have this other question, which is uh, similar to the question that we had. I think that was the third question, if not the second one, which says if theta is 30 and the resultant force acting on the, I don't know if this is a gasset uh, plate, yes, yeah, a gasset, is directed along the positive x-axis, determine the magnitude of F2 and the resultant force. So this is a very simple question, like I said. So <coughs> what we just need to do here is um, to, to just find the components, yeah. So we just find the summation of forces in the X and summation of forces in the Y. So the summation of forces in the X are therefore going to be equal to, um, the summation of forces in the X are going to be equal to what? So we have, uh, we start with uh, F1. So F1 is here and the angle is there. So meaning uh, if this is moving in this direction, going like that, it means that the X component is also going to move like that. This is what it means. So if we have the 30 degrees there, it means that we're going to have a negative, um, if we have a 30 degrees there, we're going to have a negative X component. So X, negative X component, this will be negative uh, four kilonewtons. So this is going to be negative four uh, kilonewtons times, um, negative four kilonewtons uh, times what? This is opposite there. So we're going to have sine 30 degrees there. And then we also have the other F2, which is there. So F2, the angle phi, which is given to be 30 there. So phi has been given to be 30. So we say positive because the F2 is moving like that. And then it goes <laughs> like that, meaning we have, um, we are moving in the positive. We are moving in the positive X axis. So since we're moving in the positive X axis, what we do is that we write positive there and then we say F2, then since it's adjacent to the phi there, we say cos 30. And then we have another one, which is here, F3. So F3 is simply just five kilonewtons. And this five, uh, and, and to find the X component of F3, we simply move like that. So to find F3 or to locate F3 in space, we simply move like that, then we go down like that. So meaning we also move, we are also moving in the positive X. So we are going to have a positive there. And to find, since we've not been given the numbers, we've only been given this triangle, we get the one that is in the X and then divided by the hypotenuse there. So the one that is in the X there is what? Is four divided by the hypotenuse, which is five. And then we are multiplying this with uh, five kilonewtons. Okay, so this is what we have. So here is just a matter of adding them and then we find the, the answer this side. So the first one there, sine 30 gives us 0 0.5 times four, we're getting negative two there. Then cause, and then we also have this one, five in that five will cancel, meaning we're going to have positive four there. And we have F2 cos 30. Then we have plus F2 cos 30. So when you add the two there, negative two and four there will simply just give you what? Positive two. So we have two plus 30, I mean two plus F2 cos 30. And then the other one that we have is the summation of forces in the Y. The other one that we need to find is the summation of forces in the Y. So the summation of forces in the Y, um, the summation of forces in the Y, is simply just going to be um, 
So the summation of forces in the Y is going to be uh, the first uh, Y component that we have. Okay. We are going to have the summation of forces in the Y, the first Y component, we're going to have this one uh, from, from F1, which is this one. So it's also pointing towards the negative uh, Y. So we have, because it's moving from there, going down like that. So we have negative uh, four. So we have negative four uh, cos because we have, because it's adjacent to the angle. So we say cos 30. Then the other one that we have is for F2. So F2, the Y component is opposite. So we say uh, plus F2 uh, sine. 30, and then the last one here that we have is three over five. So three over five there, when you look at the Y component of, uh, the Y component of, so the Y component of, um, these guys are making a lot of noise here, anyway. So the Y component of, uh, of this force, which is five kilonewtons, is going to be, uh, is directed towards the negative y axis. So we expect to have a negative there. And then uh, we have three in the y. So we're going to have three over five. Then I'm multiplying this by uh, five kilonewtons. So that and that will cancel as well. So I'm just going to have. Uh, four cos 30, so negative four cos 30 will give us 3.46. So we have three negative 3.46 and uh, plus F2, I mean, uh, minus three. So when we say minus three, this is going to be, so we have a negative 3.6, 3.46 and minus uh, three that we're remaining with here. So we're getting something like negative 6.46. Then you are adding it to F2 sine 30. So it has plus F2 sine 30. Yeah. So these are the two forces that we have in the X and in the Y. So let us read through the question again. When it says, um, if phi is equal to 30, and the resultant force acting on the gusset, uh, the gusset uh, plate is directed along the positive x axis. So it's directed along the positive x axis. That's the resultant. Determine the magnitude of F2. Determine the magnitude of F2. And um, the resultant force. So first of all, we need to find F2, and then from there we can find the resultant force. So we have been told to say the resultant force, um, sorry. so we've been told to say the resultant force is directed along this um, along this this x uh, axis. So what that means is that so what that means is that um, the resultant force does no does not have the y component. And what it means that it means that the summation of forces in the y for the resultant force is simply just equal to zero. So we equate the summation of forces in the y to zero. And what, it, what, what that means is that we're going to equate this part to zero. So we have negative 6.46 plus F2 uh, sine 30. We are equating this to zero. Then we take this to the other side of the equal sign. So we have F2 sine 30 being equal to 6.46. So the value of F2 becomes uh, 6.46 over sine 30, and this gives us what? Oh, 
this will give us so we have 6.42 uh, this will give us um, wait did I make any mistake anyway so we have this negative three and negative 3.46 let me just go through it quickly so I have sign I mean cos 30 multiplying with four then we're adding it to that then divided by sine 30. Okay, so we have uh, uh, 12.93. So we have 12.93 um, kilonewtons. So this is the value for F2, but how do we find the resultant? So the resultant is therefore, the resultant uh, F, yeah, so the resultant force, is therefore going to be equal to the X component. Why am I saying it's just going to be equal to the X component? Because it does not have the Y component. Yeah, the resultant of this force does not have the Y component. And hence it's just going to be the, the same as uh, the summation of forces in the X. So this is therefore going to be equal to, we just replace the value of F2 there. So we have negative four sine 30, and then we have plus F2 there. Oh, sorry, let me just get this part. So we're going to have something like this. So we have two plus, our F2 has been found to be 12.93. Then we have cos 30, and this is going to give us, so times cos 30, and then we add it to two. So this is giving us 13.1963 uh, uh, kilo newtons. So this is uh, what we have as the resultant force. And this is the F2 they wanted us to find. So these questions are very simple. You just need to understand the concept behind uh, vectors and scalars, that's all. Okay, let's move on to the next question.